bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other way Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Children of Ente. We're so, so happy to have you here. This is such a lovely, wonderful safe space that we so enjoy being a part of. Thank you all for being here today. Um, as usual, we'll jump over to Adam with our lovely, wonderful sponsors. I almost started talking before the mute, but I got the mute that time. So there we're we professionals. go. We, we saw your we side eye. You saw that. We're doing it live, doing it live. All right. Thank you to all of our sponsors, uh, Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Thanks so much for the support. You can get an Electrum chest code on the overlay or bouncing around in chat. We have Die Hard Dice, who has supplied our cast with Neb's Nests of Numbers. Ooh. Neb's Nests of Numbers. I have um, so many ideas now. <laughs> oh. I love that. So, so that's uh, that's what we have from Die Hard. You can also check out Die Hard with the code Airte and get 10% off your order. And we are also giving away a $20 gift uh, card or, or I think it's a code that you put in for that. But good luck uh, to uh, snagging that here tonight. And finally tonight, you'll hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape because epic games need epic sound. I'm Adam Bradford, CDO at Demiplane, and tonight mm -hmm. I am playing Silas Sorrell, your dimensionally displaced magical super fan. With a cape. Yes. With a cape. <laughs> yeah. He's going to get a new nickname before too long. Mm. And a glowing he eye. <laughs> He's living his best superhero life. Being of superheroes. Lots of pockets. Lots of pockets. <laughs> you That's pockets what superhero suits are Pockets and pouches. Right? Yeah. Like superhero suits are... It depends on which era you're pocket. from. If, if you're from the Did 90s, you might not have a cape, but you got a lot of pouches. So. Oh, okay. A utility oh, belt? Does Silas have a utility belt yet? Not yet. I mean, not yet. A grappling hook? Spoiler alert. Utility kilts. Utility kilts are awesome. It is like... <laughs> Each pocket's like a bag of holding. Yay! Denifash, the kilt will come. <laughs> All right, moving on. Everybody, I'm Alicia Marie, and as of right now, um, actually, okay, socials, Alicia Marie body, but as of right now, I am in San Diego for San Diego Comic-Con this Yay. week. So we're here, things are popping off. Uh, preview night is tomorrow night, so we're ready to roll. A lot of really interesting and cool things coming out this week. I'll be able to announce some of my socials, so if you're around, uh, my socials, follow me and I'll, I'll be able to fill you in on all the crazy things that are going to be happening this week while I'm here in Gas Lamp. Tonight, I am playing Fruz Armstrong, attorney at law. I'm very <laughs> proud. She's still, she's still employed as of right now. I mean, yeah. she hasn't been fired yet. No. So. Yeah. <laughs> you if you never been on work like 10 days. <laughs> if you never received the notice, then you're never actually yeah. let go, right? <laughs> you well, on two day. weeks over the holidays. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> vacation, PTO, right? Hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on socials as at Dreamwisp. Um, I sometimes am streaming on Twitch as Dreamwisp Jen. Um, and uh, I will not be in San Diego, but I am sending my love to everyone who is um, and missing you and wishing I could be there. Um, but tonight, I will be playing Maeve Morgan Flynn, your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, who is, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Done strategizing? <laughs> Never done strategizing, <laughs> but has, has done the theory dump and is is going to uh, sit back and not theory dump today. She's going to sit back and heal yeah. from her near-death experience. Let my brain rest. <laughs> In, enjoy a good little bit of downtime after the theory dump. It was a good theory mm -hmm. dump. 
<laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content manager over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. I will be at San Diego Comic-Con. So, hey, if you're going to be there, come say hi. Also, uh, don't follow me. Follow Elder Eye Entertainment because episode four of The Velvet Lodge is coming out tomorrow. Yeah, and if you've been following along, uh, my, my, my character's gone through a bit. Yeah, you should watch. <laughs> it's amazing. It is a horror TTRPG. Please look at the warnings because, whew but it's great and I really love it. But tonight I am not playing that character who did uh, things that you'll just have to watch. Tonight I'm playing Neb, who is a little upset at a couple of people who came out of a mirror. And hello everybody, I'm Hope Lavelle. Follow me on the socials at the Hope Lavelle. You can watch me as a dungeon master on Misfits of Alceta every Wednesday, except we are off for two weeks, which is awful. But, <laughs> so don't forget about us. We will be back. Um, mm -hmm. But tonight I am playing my favorite granny for hire, mm -hmm. Miss Robin Beckett. <laughs> Wonderful. I am Deborah Ann Wool. I am your storyteller for this evening. Um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, last week was wild. Um, <laughs> you had a lot of questions planned for the 213 meetup with Ivy and Talron, and uh, <laughs> didn't really get a chance to talk much. Ivy took off running. Um, Talron, surprisingly, um, Robin uh, actually understood Talron's strange language, I believe, as well as <laughs> Silas got a little bit of it as well. Um, I got his feelings about got it. Got his anyway. feelings about it, yes. He got the, the abstract surrounding thoughts of his language. Um, but he also really just wanted to know where Ivy was. Uh, and then after a minute, they both got sucked back into the mirror. And you are now standing in the eerie, dead silence of 214. Or 215, I guess. Is everyone okay? No, that was really disappointing. We did all of that Physically planning. okay. Is oh, everyone yeah. physically okay? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nobody got like bull rushed by Ivy when she took off like a bat out of hell. Which is funny to because be she's not the by bull. Talrin, who was actually <laughs> a bull. The bull. <laughs> yeah, the one who got a bull rush decided to actually say a few things. But um, uh, Miss Robin, did you? It seemed like you were catching what they were saying. What What did they say? Ah, it was strange. It was just looking for Ivy and asking where she was. Obviously, he didn't seem to care about us at all. I read some thoughts, and it was very much so the uh, classic one-track mind. Like, there was a, a pretty obsessive singular thought that I was getting. Where is Ivy? I've got to find Ivy. G give me Ivy. I'm trying to... I'm trying to feel like what Ivy did makes sense in the grand scheme of things, because, you know, we warned her she was only going to have a little bit of time and to be prepared, and so if she... If she was prepared to run, okay, I can kind of understand that. But I'm, I, it still gives me agita. I'm so upset that she didn't even try to like talk to us or anything, or just say hi, or say follow me, or whatever. Does she not care about us and all that we've done for her? Remember when I said I was going to rest my brain for a bit? <laughs> I lied. <laughs> I got dragged back into the mirror. What would happen if we were to destroy the mirror when they were out of it? <gasps> I, I didn't even think of that. My gut says that we just end up back at the beginning of all this with a bunch of shards and they're still going to appear at 213 because they were appearing long before we started putting shards back in the mirror. But that's that's just my guess. Or what if we made it harder for the, them to get back to the mirror and bought ourselves some time? I don't know how we'd do it. But remind me again why we think helping her will help us get home. Because it's really been the only, we, only we thing we have known to do. The whole we don't time know that here. she's going to help us get home. The, the, the two things are potentially unrelated. Well, maybe we need to shift our focus. Yeah, then. we decided to help her because, uh, you know, we believe the sob story. But after that right there, the, the one thing. Now, again, I'm not saying that, like, no, actually, I'm going to say that. There's no way I would do what she just did uh, when, when I got out of this. But 
I am saying yeah. that we're pretty clear on she is looking out for numero uno. Yep. Like she mm -hmm. is out for numero uno. And so we need to keep that very, very clear in any of our future dealings with her. Well, I don't know if she's ever promised directly that she can help, but we've always thought putting the mirror back together would help get whoever wants to go home back home. And now that we know that a scribe was re required or did things to make this happen, maybe that's part of it is whether it's going to bring back Julian or bring back scribing magic or make someone else a scribe and then they can get us back home. So I think we're still, I think we're still down that path. You know what? I've done a lot of things in my life. I you, could probably Robin? figure I could figure out how to scribe. Just, you know, just here, there. Give me something to write with and a magic wand. I'll do it. Robin, yeah, if there's I mean, anyone who could, I absolutely believe it would be you. Do, do you need like a fancy pen? Do you need like one of those quills with the, the feathers on the I can the make end? you one for a couple of hours. Whatever it takes, I'm willing to try. I'm just saying I'm tired of relying on these people who we don't know anything about. And well, what we have learned about them hasn't really been good. So, hey, I know that this is normally, you know, uh, Maeve's purview. But um, I have a little bit of a theory that I kind of wanted to float out there uh, <laughs> right. now. Um, yeah. So uh, our buddy Crash here mentioned that these are like doors. Yeah. At least he thinks mm -hmm. that they are. I think so. Right? Mm -hmm. And so what if we've had this wrong this entire time? Because, listen, remember the motivation was that these rulers wanted to get into the veil in order to find a way into earth and you know, all of that. Right. So what if they're not actually imprisoned inside a mirror? What if that is a door to Ivy's realm and to Talron's realm and they can still just, you know, live and do whatever they want to in their realm. So maybe they're not in any danger at all. Maybe they're just frolicking around in their own realm, but then they have some weird magic mirror in their evil lair and then they're waiting for some yuppies to come along and be like, hey, y'all put this together where I can come out and do whatever I want to in the veil. Well, if they could have gotten it on the train and they were trying to infiltrate, it would have been a way to do that. Right. Well, we know that the rulers can get to the veil because supposedly, you know, there's the two of them in the mirror and then the other two are here somewhere. Well, so... it still takes a door though, right? I thought is what we heard the stories anyway. And I'm just saying maybe this is like, Maybe they've gotten to a place where no scribe. If so to clarify on the doors, doors. doors. Other than death, there are a few ways to travel between the worlds. Powerful magic can tear a temporary rift. And then the scribes, one person per generation gifted with the ability to cut through reality at will. And sometimes they forget to close those passages, which is how Pivum got here. Yep, mm. yep. Found a door it's in the woods, find a bush. In the real hard to see. Just stumble I mean, I think that these, I think that these rulers are business. powerful, but maybe not omnipotent. What I'm saying is maybe it's really hard to find a door, and this is just a reliable door. Like they know this is a door, but the door's broken because it's missing, it's mm -hmm. you know, missing a shard mm -hmm. at this point or whatever. But if they can get here, if they can get into the veil, why don't they just get the shards if that's the case? I mean, maybe they can't get into the veil because maybe it's still like, do we know that they can get into the veil without a door? That's what I'm saying is that this is a door that they know. This could be a door that they know about and maybe they don't know how to find other doors or something. So a door from where they are to the veil and then right. they still have to find. A, mm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, obviously this is just a theory I'm throwing out there. I'm just saying that like, I get the impression maybe that they're not as trapped as maybe we first thought. So, so wait, back up for a second, you know, put it in reverse, hit the brakes. Does that mean that finding the, sh the last shard would mean it would open this doorway you're talking about, or is the shard inconsequential entirely in this? I no, I think the shard might make it to where the door won't close back on them. <clears throat> oh. And that they won't have like, like right now they have like some kind of, you know, tether or something like a bungee cord attached. And it's like sucking them back in a minute later because the magic is broken. But um, again, this is just my theory based on, you know, everything that we've seen uh, happen right now, because that's the deal is why on earth would Ivy think 
that she could leave. Like if she knew that like the only way she would be free is to have all the shards restored, then yeah. why would she bolt like that right there? Because this is the first time since being trapped in the mirror that she's been outside. And, and that I gives mean, we her, didn't, we didn't know what was going to happen. I'm not saying that I'm defending the whole don't chat with us, just run, but we weren't even sure what was going to happen. But, but I guess what I'm saying is if she was actually convinced that getting all the shards was going to like, you know, uh, fix everything in her world and that she would be free, you know, then, then it seems like it would be pretty hopeless to just try to run and get away at that point in time. Um, like, I, I guess what I'm saying is I think that it could just be that they are trying to, to get back to the veil, but right now they, maybe this spell, maybe we've been lied to, maybe this spell that Julian did trapped them in their realms where they couldn't meddle in the veil. That's what I was saying. That, that Julian shattered the, the way for them to get in and out. Then why... And putting it back, basically. And we're putting it back, back together. Well, if, if Julian shattered it, and we go on the assumption that Julian then placed the shards, why make it so we could find them? And if Julian shattered it and someone else is helping lead us to the shards, why doesn't that someone else just get the shards? Because maybe that someone else is one of the other rulers working with them and can't do that themselves. Maybe the rulers aren't allowed to interfere. I don't know how magic works. I, don't I ask also, me. I'm I not am an not expert. convinced that yeah. Julian is the masochist that is putting us through all this. Like, I, I have not believed that the entire time that we've been floating. Yet. Like, I think somebody else is trying to uh, put, put us through the ringer for other, uh, you know, purposes. But mm -hmm. I think either way, like, to me, maybe the the nature of what we're trying to do here becomes less about finding the last shard and more about trying to find Julian. I mean, why like, not? I think Julian can give us answers. Well, well, if we find the last shard, there's nothing that says we have to immediately put it in the mirror. I'm with yeah. you there. And if we're yeah. holding the yeah. last shard, maybe either Talrin and or Ivy will be less likely to be obstinate and more likely to talk. Mm-hmm. I think when we find the last shard, we will, we can judge how they act, knowing that we have it. Because right now, you you talked to Silas about why would she run if she knows that we're helping. Well, we've already mm -hmm. questioned her motivations in front of her a couple of times. And if you are offered, maybe in the future these people will help you. But right now, there's a chance you could run. No, I think to, to clear to clarify, that's not actually what I was saying because I actually understand that motivation. But I'm saying if she was convinced that the mm -hmm. only way she could get free was for the mirror to be restored, then however that comes to pass, then why would she run? And that, that leads me to believe she is I'm not actually, convinced that she, I'm, the mirror has to be restored for her to get out of there. Uh, she might now after it failed, but I'm just I, saying before that, I don't know. If because she what if, what if assembling the shards opens the passageway to Erte? And what if it has to be done by, by people from, the realm. Exactly. I'm with oh. you there. So Should explain why that's a way to get home. Tearing the hole. <clears throat> well, we're just going to let them into Earth. Mm. Could well, be. I don't, I don't know. Well, hopefully Where can we, we get information? Pivot, is there a place we could find information here? Julian? Um. <laughs> because this is just, we're currently off on conspiracy boards and wild Ooh. tangents and knowing nothing about this place. Other than Robin, do you happen to have any us. red string? I know you've got that yellow string. You got some red. <laughs> red yarn. Um, I, yeah, Pivim's just kind of still uh, trying to like deal with the fact of what he just saw. Mm -hmm. um, potentially mm -hmm. two leaders from like literally like <laughs> Maleficent and Scar mm -hmm. just showed up in front of him and <laughs> and he's like, what? You know, or whatever it is, you know, Sleeping Beauty and, and somebody else. He's yeah. just like completely, you know, his, his storybook <laughs> tales are coming true in front of his eyes. So he's still trying to grapple with that. Um, but he looks to go to you and he says, you know, stories are stories. Everyone has their own idea of what their story is. Um, who do you know? You know, What's real for them doesn't mean that it's true for someone else. That's all I can say. Existential relativism. Very nice. I guess so. 
I should have taken more philosophy courses in, in college. Yeah. Sounds sounds like you know the only story you know about Ivy is from her own mouth. Yeah. Who knows? And and a tiny little bit that we're we're making some assumptions based on the history of Julian and tying the two mm -hmm. of them together. Right. Uh, and I mean, how much Steve really wanted to help her. We True. liked him. <clears throat> True. Well, so, we don't know if Steve was, we, we know that the servant was bound into servitude, that the, the servant was required to protect the rulers. It wasn't a, a choice. So Steve, from what you told us, Silas, was, had a, a bond, correct? Mm -hmm. To Ivy, we'll but, that. but mm -hmm. we don't know what that entailed what he thought about that okay i think so we, we should try to find julian or we should try to restore steve because i would trust the information out of those two sources more than True. i currently would trust the two sources inside this marriage so julian would be hundreds of years old at this point and well, possibly he was exploded Magic. Well, like I've seen so many movies where it's like, oh, that person's supposed to be 180, and they're just like completely fine. Like they probably found the Holy Grail or something, and and they've been drinking it, you know, every <laughs> ten years. So. The Penitent's irritational pass. Exactly. Pivum. Okay, so but it's spelled with know. an I. Where did you say you were from again, Pivum? Me? Oh, um. Lorelia <laughs> 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 is my world, yes. Lorelia with uh, our leader is Zola, the swamp queen. What do you think about Zola? Zola, she's very, very powerful. Um, before, when things were in balance, we really, really liked Zola. But as soon as she left our world, at least that's what we assumed she did, everything started to kind of crumble. Ah, so there's my answer. You're saying that without a ruler, whether they be good or bad, then the realms start to break down. Like, you can't I... just live peacefully without a ruler, right? No. Something about so... them, their energy keeps the world together. And that's so another who... person we should be looking for. Like, you mentioned Steve and you mentioned Julian, but we, we have no line on how to put Steve back together and no way to contact Julian. And I'm not saying we have any more with Zola, but of those three... We mm -hmm. know Zola is here. We know she has a lot of information. She might be willing to talk with her once again. If we have that last shard, I think we have more power than we think. Well, here's Are you one telling other thing. me that you want to go on a quest to find the Swamp Queen? Why not? Sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know she was called the Swamp Same Queen, but okay. Yeah. Queen. Okay. Sounds um, like a great chapter of a book. <laughs> I'm sorry, babe, what were you going to say before I got excited by swamps? No, the Swamp Queen, that sounds delightful. Doesn't yeah, that, uh, but at the same time, it sounds like book. a side quest. <laughs> but if Zola can give us the information hey, hey, look, that we need. I understand, but, but like, who's to say that she can be trusted too? Because again, but, the way that these... Here's, here's what I'm wondering. So if we know we currently, if we think, okay, this is like weird. This is the kind of thing you think about a burning man, but just bear with me. Uh if we think about the doors having two sides, yeah, so one side, because one side is hot and the other is not. And one side one has like, cold. the other side has Talrin. For all we know, maybe they are trapped. Maybe there's someone else, another presence that's keeping, that wants to destabilize each of these realms that's trying to take over and is trying to trap all of the leaders. In that case, wouldn't us having that lash yard and having the ability to open those doors again, wouldn't that draw them out? It might draw them out, but we might also be able, they might not actually be where they're supposed to be. We don't know if their realms are the way they were supposed to be, mm. or if the leaders are gone from their realms and the realms are falling apart. Because if that's the case, then someone's trying to trap the leaders to destabilize each of the realms. I think we learned this though. Julian was in love with Ivy and then Talrun, and, and it was more just like a personal matter and didn't seem to have anything to do with the realms. Well, uh, there's it wasn't always, between there's I... always four dimensional chess happening when you <laughs> talk politics. And at least as far as the story goes, Ivy and Julian were just looking to escape, and Talrin was going after them because Julian was a scribe and trying to get to Erte. So it, it, it is kind of intertwined. 
Yeah, I'm just simply saying that instead of going after another ruler, um, that I am just going to be more inclined to believe what the proletariat has to say over the bourgeoisie. Well, so do you know where Zola went at all? Because for all we know, Zola's on our path. They have a lot of intertwine. Could be. Um, I mean, you'd know Zola if you saw her. Uh, mm -hmm. she's, she's enormous and she's covered in mud. Um, she Is she big enough problems? to destroy a giant swath of trees? Sure. But if she uh, I've never seen her done anything like that. But if she's... Uh, Silas, I see your point, but if she's the ruler of Earth, that feels very out of character to destroy the land, right? We don't know what's yeah, wrong with yeah. those trees. There might be something <laughs> wrong with them. Might be like those beetles that chew them I up. Mean, and... Maybe I can ask them. Maybe when we get there, I can find someone to ask. Someone? We, we've ran into like a total of one someone. <laughs> Let me, let me be a little That's more specific. Right there. Let me be a little more specific. Remember, he's like this. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me like clarify. First off, you're talking to me. Second off, I can talk to a lot of things. So when I say talk to stuff, I mean like anything. So yeah, I mean, we might find a little squirrel that you know was in the tree when it toppled over when Zola came through there on her beetle crushing crusade. Yeah, well, got it. It can't hurt to get some information. I still think. Oh, no matter, I agree with that. Yeah. No matter what, I think we really do need to get this last shard, if only because once we have it, people are going to want us to do something with it. And that may open up some avenues of conversation. And I agree with what Maeve was saying. Maybe that was our purpose. Like, we're the only ones that could have done this. You know, if you think about it, all of the things that have happened to us in the past like few days, like our initials in the cave, like it was meant for us to find these things. But so, I feel like you're glossing over the other part of what Maeve said, is that like, if we're, the only, the, the, if we're the only ones that can do it, we may be doing something that ends up uh, being used for nefarious purposes, <laughs> like letting them into Earth and, you know, being able to take over where we're from or whatever their intent is. With that. Why can't this be like a movie and it's like for good only? <laughs> you and I watch different movies. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of this is valid speculation, but like we've also said, it's speculation until we get more information. So we should probably just try to figure out where to go tomorrow. Well, maybe this giant pathway of trees. So that, that is a is slightly more immediate. Relatively reason. urgent. I mean, what's urgent is the creature that may have made that, which if it's the same creature that decimated an entire pack of wolves a while back, then I have more than strong words to have with them. Also, trapping us in a cave with an avalanche, perhaps. Uh, Not particularly perhaps. a son. If, if they're responsible for that too, yeah. Do we know where we have to go? To it's yeah. pretty clear when you look at the pathway. <laughs> it's pretty pretty direct you get a super highway there <laughs> do we besides the super highway do, do we get any uh specifics about this final area and where we might need to go so what I'm you to... know outside of you know just literally what we've already revealed um you know that the train station is a good ways beyond where you are but that it is having to go around you know follow the contours of the mountains whereas this path that has been mowed in the forest does seem to kind of bird's eye you know as the crow flies uh cut off some of that extra travel um you know that it was going to be a hike through the woods um, there was going to potentially, I think, you know, the brochure probably said something about teaching you some survival skills, how to like camp out and survive, you know, through the night, what types of berries you could eat, um, identifying plants and animals, scat, that kind of thing. That, was the, that was the excursion. Okay. And there, besides the train station, there's mm -hmm. nothing else that would have been descriptive of like, oh, there's like a a scenic overlook or there's a we're going to head towards this thing hmm. um i mean I, i'll say you know it said that it included a um like a, a campsite by a, a babbling brook you know that kind of thing so it was you know picturesque wood woodland forest experience 
and uh, Maeve, uh, Silas, those of you, uh, Pippin, those of you who saw the swath, when you say that it's a, it cuts right through the woods, like, does it go to the shore? Does it go to a certain place in the woods? Like, where does it stop? We couldn't see, right? It, yeah, it appeared, it just, you know, it went through the trees and around the bend of the mountain, and that's all they saw. All right, so I guess it just if, went. And I suppose if we follow it, we'll figure out where. Oh, well, that's good enough for me. And then if we don't find anything at the end of that path, I guess uh, head towards the Then we're station. closer than we are now. True, true. And, and then we can head to the, the train station. Maybe there'll be clues there. And maybe the train. Who knows? Oh, my gosh. I would like I would like to be that optimistic, but I'm beginning to think the train is staying where it is. Oh, I believe I just, the train's staying where it is. I know. Oh, okay. I just had like a feeling. I'm just like, trying, to, we... trying to echo the optimism you all seem to have most of the time. <laughs> but imagine if we get to where we're going and the train is just there, sitting there, glistening and intact. How we would feel? You'd all be suspicious. Let's let's be honest. If there Correct. was a train and just right sitting there. So. Just... There would there would be so much suspicion. So wouldn't you be? I, I'm not saying uh, I wouldn't be. No, but I I think that is that's a dream that maybe if it happens, it's going to be more more trouble than it's worth. So why don't we why don't we get the mirror and go to sleep and all right, we'll hike through the woods tomorrow. We're ready. Okay. Okay. So you still have this amazing igloo that Feruza has built for you. It is holding up remarkably well. That was like a natural 20 that you rolled when we built this thing. So it's like, it is a proper shelter home. You don't need the, <laughs> the Northern Heritage Line guidebook. You guys are, are, are have some place warm to stay. Mm -hmm. um, you curl up in there. You've hidden your mirror away, however you're going to do it, kept your, you know, Maybe it's maybe it's in Robin's bag. Maybe it's wrapped in the quilt in the corner. Um, you can take some, some watches or both. <laughs> um, you can take some watches. I'm gonna speed you through this long rest a little bit just because we're we're ready to continue. I think um, mm -hmm. so. You can take some watches if you like, but these uh, you know eight hour rest will pass uneventfully. Yay, long rest! Yes, go ahead, mm -hmm. long rest yourselves. <laughs> Yay! Any of those hit points back? <laughs> I can't tell you how much fun. I mean, other dungeon masters out there will know, and obviously, other dungeon masters at this table will know how much fun it is to listen to your players theorize. <laughs> oh my God! You're sitting there laughing at us. <laughs> no, I mean, sometimes you know, it's just it's not even laughing at it. It's just like, wow, this is so interesting. Um, also, welcome to day thirteen, everybody. Lucky thirteen. Thirteen. Oh yeah, oh, that been two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. that's it. Over the holidays, of course, you absolutely have your job, Faruza. It's been two weeks. <laughs> Nobody is over looking the for us holidays. Yet. <laughs> there may be people looking for us, but you still have your job. Maybe, yes. maybe the, the, the woman who's so. watching your bird is a little bit like, man, she stuck me <laughs> sitting for her pet. She's that's on true. my back. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe's moms are worried. Maybe's moms are very worried because <laughs> because holidays holidays at at the Flynn house are uh, are are over the top. <laughs> I'm sure Neb's family is incredibly worried, and she's trying not to think too much about that. Yeah, that could this could be mm -hmm. an interesting long rest thing. So yeah, uh, Robin and Silas, what? How do you think people are for our little long rest spiel? We'll make it quick and say, how do you think people at home are are reacting to your absence? Um, well, Robin has no one, so <laughs> a tiny apartment in the city with blank walls. Are you your know, plants well? Or... The plants might be missing her <laughs> a little bit, but, uh, you know, what? nope, no one would probably notice. As she works at a temp agency, no one's really, <laughs> there's right. no one to right. call into every day, no, right. no full-time job, so, uh, she Probably mm. fine. No, Silas? no, no one is concerned about Silas. He, yeah, he's done. Fine. He's done this many times. Uh, <laughs> uh, said oh, right. he was going off and then not coming back when he said he was going to. Uh, his buddy Phil is running the store, and Phil will just continue to run the store until 
uh, uh, probably until he dies. There's a trust, uh, there's probably, a trust and, set up, and, and, that and probably never wonder where Silas is. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's uh, uh, you know, it is very unlikely that anyone is missing Silas's presence at this point in time, except for one person who's probably missed him uh, for years, but uh, um... he th thinks that he's probably dead. And that's right. Doesn't Silas have like bunches of money? They probably used to use like an extension billionaire of <laughs> running off somewhere. <laughs> Not a billionaire, but millionaire. Really? Yes. Being, being a land thief, really. Uh... <laughs> that land thieving paid off in his younger days. Mm -hmm. That's still one of my favorite things we discovered. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. Who makes a distinction? I did. I did. That was amazing. He's a land thief. I mean, if he ever gets out of here, though, he is, you know, he's learned how to start a boat so he can go piratical at any time. You are now a he water, thief. water thief. Well, that's to it, his right? resume. Like, oh. A pirate is a water thief. He's going to collect all of the elements. Yeah, become a fire thief and an air thief, and then you are uh, and then the I'll last thief. Beat you because you're the captain. Oh my, god. oh my god, I'm writing that down. <laughs> He's already been a heart thief for, for many Aww. years. Aww. <laughs> Captain oh, oh, my God. I'm I love it. Um, and laugh. Feruza, since I stole yours and made it about your bird, is there anything you'd like to add about what's going on in your... Um, actually, okay, so you? her neighbor, Esther, is obviously <laughs> taking care of Frederick, so Frederick's yeah. fine. But she took her requisite two weeks vacation. So we're not quite there yet. I mean, after okay. a few days, and, and, and believe me, if she doesn't show up to work, people will then, because she's super responsible. You know, she isn't like the rest of these people. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No shade. You'll, end, you'll end up on milk cartons is what we're Yeah, <laughs> They will be like, front page of the New York Times. Show up for work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Anything else to add <laughs> about back home? All right, you have a, a nice, restful, long rest, a ni nice, restful sleep here. You dream about what people at home uh, who are either, you know, the people who are missing you or those that are not, your dying plants, your happy bird, um, and wake up restored uh, and ready to get going on your adventure. All right, we're heading just straight for the swath. Is that the plan? <laughs> Let's do it. Headed for the swath. That's All right. what it's called now. <laughs> it's the swath. Just like, let me get the map. I'll mark it down. <laughs> uh, so yes, you all start to hike up. Uh, you know, Pippa along with you here. Um, there is no train on the track. There is still snow. You can still see the holes in the blast that uh, you know Robin made with her her fireball. Um, it's all sort of as you left it last night. Um, you continue to take your walk over to this bridge where you can look down and see the swath in front of you leading into the woods. How tall are the trees in this area generally? So the trees in this area generally are probably, you know, 20 to 30 feet tall. Some may be even as high as 50. Um, and in this area, they have just been flattened. Some of them have been completely uprooted and thrown away. Um, and yeah, a, a definite path has been carved. And we've arrived at like the front of that where mm -hmm. the trees have fallen down. Mm -hmm. And the snow is disrupted. Some of it has, you know, pulled snow away so that the, the ground is exposed. Um, underneath that, rocks have been moved. Um, yeah. Does anyone see any footprints or anything? Silas is going to just float up about, mm -hmm. you know, 40 feet into mm -hmm. the air and, um, just you know scan around as much as he can and mm -hmm. like basically he's gonna just stay at about the top of the tree line um as as we're you know walking down this path um mainly just want to make sure that he's not just completely sticking out like a sore thumb uh if somebody is looking into the sky so just trying Great. to stay amongst the, the top of the trees gotcha gotcha okay that's pretty good do you want to do a stealth check for that or um he's not really because that. basically as you as you see that he is um as you see that he does that the hat turns into a cape and and it like flutters out you know like behind yeah. him and, and as he's flying up and he's like mm -hmm. yeah you're right 
this is the way to do it. And, yeah, uh, why would you hide all this and, and then and, Yeah, and then he um, he's just going to you know float up there. And at the moment, he's uh, since he heard Neb say something about footprints, I do just want to scan the area and see if I see footprints and possibly if that kind of perspective sees that there are giant footprints. Um, Investigation anyway. check. Also, Silas, as you float on up there, Neb will say, uh, make sure you keep an ear out, too, because if it is the invisible creature from back uh, at the mine, it's an invisible creature. And he doesn't respond to you because he didn't hear you in the first place, and that probably doesn't bode too well for him to being able to hear the invisible creature either. Um, but, but, but as that's going on, um, so uh, I actually, uh, Deb, uh, yes. I rolled really well, but I would prefer okay. for you to roll that if you oh, don't okay. mind, because right. I, I want to I wanna not know if he's getting back good information. Fantastic. What's your investigation bonus? Uh, it is plus uh, four. Four, okay. Um, <clears throat> you don't see anything that looks like footprints to you. Um, it looks wilder than that um you know it's um much more of a sort of organic path that is following like more like a river would carve than a person who was like i want to go this way you know um okay. that's what you're getting all right um i i'm gonna float a little bit uh, closer down because i imagine the wind is probably pretty bad mm -hmm. um in this place and so mm -hmm. he just it's wants definitely to... and above the trees much worse you know down in the trees you're getting a little bit yeah so buffer. so he, he kind of comes down where he doesn't have to yell and he says um yeah you know i i really don't know if whatever did this uh you know walked um like i i don't see footprints i feel like this is something um uh, I don't know, it almost seems like a river or something, uh, some kind of force. I've become a little bit familiar with like, you know, being able to like just push, push things. I've seen some of you, I can't remember who did this. I think it was you, Neb, like you just like go, go into the, the rock or something or the, the earth or something, you know, it's, it's almost Ooh. like that. Uh, I can, I can move rock around a little bit. I've never tried going into it. Pivot like runs up to you and goes, Oh yeah, 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 that's amazing. I saw you do that. You might have some Lorelia ancestors, I see. Ooh. Yeah. I didn't what? think about that either. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah Silas, <laughs> and she'll repeat the whole keep an ear out because invisibility, now that you're talking <laughs> with her. And then um, since we're at the start of this path, the trees that are uprooted, mm -hmm. is it the same as what we what I saw at the mine and where it's obvious that it just happened and the roots are all up and there's worms and bugs and things. Yes. So okay. you, it does remind you of those, of, of what you saw. Um, this obviously has been probably 24 to 36 hours since this happened. So it's a little bit less fresh than that. The bugs and things have all retreated. Um, but yes, there's no, there's places where the snow is definitely not as covered. It's been snowing this whole time, but you know, you can see the depression. So you, you have a, it looks like 36 hours, like after what you saw previously. Okay. So when I when I use no, I am using force, right? And it it's force that moves fast. Yes. From what I can tell from my experience with that, does this look like it was fast force breaking this, or does it look like it was something moving more slowly, carving this path? Like, does this look like something, you know? not punched its way through but you know a quick zoom through i i look... love i love your uh justification behind it so give me an advantage to investigation um i'll let you roll it great what's your bonus um investigation uh plus four okay great um you tell me where you had your experience with this but to you, this looks like a tornado. I, I'll, that, I'll give it the microburst in New York. There you go. But, you, you know, and, and from things, footage you've seen on the news where, it, you know, one half, one side of the street will be absolutely, utterly destroyed and the other side of the street will be fine. As you look at this and you can see, that, like, these trees are fine. And on this side, it just got completely uptorn and thrown over there. Absolute devastation. So 
definitely fast force, but it's, and it's, it is that weird kind of organic yet directed uh, damage, you know, um, mm -hmm. that you're noticing. Um, I think that's what I'm gonna give you. Mm. That's what this destruction reminds you of. It reminds you of a tornado. I'll relay that. And and in, in that it, it's that sort of chaotic swirling or that it's, that this, you know, like this uprooting of trees and total utter destruction in such a confined path. Um, but not I'll, in just one direction. So it's not like things just got pushed yes, that way. It's there were down. swirling to it. Exactly. That, you, okay. know, what, you know, as much as you can kind of determine, it has that feeling of like chaos to it. Okay. Um, I'll as well as direction. Um, I will actually also offer with your role um, that you know that tornadoes don't happen. <laughs> in super cold climates like this. Mm. Or mountainous, yeah. Mm -hmm. When Piva mentions you might have some Zola in you, Neb is mm -hmm. going to kind of wander up to where the destruction has started and kneel down and put her hands on the dirt and just kind of take a really close look at everything and then walk on over to one of the trees that are unharmed but right there where the destruction would be and put her hand on the bark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna start to speak with the plants around her. Ooh, good. I mean, you were right here, so hopefully you know. Can you tell me what happened? And yeah, I speak with plants. So, oh my gosh. Do, do you need any of the details <laughs> or? I mean, Give me just a just a little flavor of what it's kind of. I can look it up, but you just yeah. Got it right you imbue plants within mm -hmm. thirty feet of you with limited sentience and animation, yeah. giving them the ability to communicate with you and follow your simple commands. You can question plants about events in the spell's area within the past day, gaining information about creatures that have passed, weather, and other circumstances. Okay. I can do stuff wow. with difficult terrain. Okay. And and I can ask them to do things, but that's up to you. And right now, right. all Neb wants to do is chat. That's gotcha. That's so, crazy. but it's, it's everything a, it's, within like thirty feet of her. right. It's slightly after that time passed, but I, here's what I'm gonna give you. There's, you, he, you hear in your head, and again, it's not in mm -hmm. English or even a language. It's just kind of this like, it's more like you speak plant than they speak. You just get this feeling of what their intention is. And it's confused. It's like, there's a lot of confused muttering between the plants, you know, the, the trees and plants over here that are unharmed and the ones over here. It's a lot of like mourning loss um and you get this striking image of roots beneath the ground that intertwine and hold on to one another being ripped apart um that they are mourning and missing i'm so i'm so sorry this happened to you do you remember what it was or can you describe what it was because we're trying to stop it from happening to anyone else as they they try to go back and remember it's at the very edge of their short memories but they seem to confirm this idea of wind and swirling uh devastating destruction um it's an odd balance between a natural chaotic event and something with direction. Again, this weird tornado space where it seems to be following something, but yet it's undirected uh, at the same time. Neb still looks distraught over mm -hmm. how you know upset everything is, but she's gonna quickly turn around and look at Pivim. Um, the, the roller of air. I know we don't know their name. They could do something like this, couldn't they? I mean, my guess is as good as yours, but... Because Maeve, the, the way you're thinking of it is what the, the plants here kind of remember is just air and wind and swirling. No creature or anything specifically. And so I can't, I can't peg it, but I have this bad feeling. Uh, so are you, are they not sure if it was something supernatural? Maybe it was just the weather here got bad. 
I didn't ask if it was supernatural. I just asked if they knew what it was. It it, it happened long enough ago that the memory's a little fuzzy, and they're mm-hmm. all real sad about uh, all, all this. Um, hmm. I mean, I could keep asking along the way. So, hey, I just, I want to throw this out there. We haven't met Air Person or Air Lord yet. And so, we don't know their name. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking, you know, tornadoes or microbursts or whatever, absolutely haven't, haven't met that person yet. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't know if that is the same as what attacked us back at the mine. There certainly was a lot of destruction, but it, it seemed to be much more specific, but it could be the same thing. It could be something different. I don't know. This, I don't know. Well, it's a clear path for us, so I say we keep going. Are, are you okay, Robin? And uh, Fruza sort of eyes Robin's huge backpack with the mirror and everything in it. Are you sure you, you got that? And she is more stooped, aren't, aren't you, Robin? A little bit yeah. underneath this, you know, she's like a, a gap year student on a yeah, plane. like a there. pack mule. I feel bad. She's like 80 years old. Pack mule. Robin, you can go, Robin. I mean, mm-hmm. Never felt better. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so you begin mm-hmm. to follow flying, walking uh, down this, following this swamp. As um, as we go, yeah. because this also lasts for 10 minutes, because apparently mm-hmm. when I decide to talk to people, I talk to them for a long time. Uh, I'll yeah. just kind of, every once in a while, check in on places and see if mm-hmm. a shrub knows more information or a tree or, you know, something. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you're gonna, you're gonna continue to get kind of the same response. Um, I don't think you'd get anything more. And you'd all hear as Neb is getting these responses. Yeah. She's also like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little overwhelming and sad to have so much of this sort of feeling coming through you. But I'll, I'll, I'll say this as, as you walk for those 10 minutes, it is this, this short memory span is starting to help. They're start, you know, you can tell some of the ones that are farther away are starting to forget and move Mm on. Um, you know, that uh, life, you know, even some of the, the seedlings and things that fell off of the trees that were uprooted, you're starting to get a little spark of new life, maybe, as they fall and get buried and pushed down into the dirt that they're going to start to germinate and create something new so that the plants have a way of recovering and, and rejuvenating after events. Um, you walk for several hours. Oh. Um, it's tiring. It's long. This is hard, heavy snow. You are carrying heavy bags. Um, you know, you are keeled up, but this is, this is arduous work, this kind mm. of a walk. At a um, certain point, yeah, um, Maeve, it's, it gets too hard. Okay. And Maeve, um, sort of holds, holds, um, that pocket knife out and is just sort of flipping it between her fingers and her chair shows up. It's made out of that same starry black material um, that her blade is um, and takes a seat and starts pushing along. Yeah, um, it's got good rugged forest, wheels. Forest is not the most <laughs> most friendly um, terrain, so the wheels are yeah. actually <laughs> spiked for it and there's a little third yeah. um, extension that makes terrain easier. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of an ingenious invention and yeah. it keeps pace great and um, yeah, has all kinds of ways like a, like a Mars rover to just kind of deal with whatever it comes uh, in contact with. And this is an upgraded paint job, Maeve. This is real nice. I think yeah. it's sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you've been going, it now becomes mm. nighttime this long oh. hike that you've been taking. You know, this is these are short days. You're only going to get a few hours of sun here throughout the day. Mm. Um, so the sun sets, it becomes dark. You have enough. The snow has stopped. The clouds have moved. There is moonlight. It is enough to see by, especially as you are not inside the woods. You are here. Um, you've made good 
distance. Um, you certainly cannot see the beginning. You've come around mountain ranges and up and over hills um, as this, this path has followed you, you know, as you have followed this path into the woods. Eventually, it just stops. And it comes to a clearing where it seems to just peter out. A clearing, you said, like a no. Where it's its last okay. sort of clearing, you know, where where it felled a bunch of trees and then just seems to. So I guess this is where they wanted us to end up, and then Silas is just looking around, expecting something to happen. Is there anything around in the clearing that looks different? Perception check, please. I would love to help with that if possible. Absolutely. What is your yeah. perception bonus? You go that way, I'll go this way. Uh, plus seven. <laughs> plus seven. Oh. You know what? Can I help you instead? Oh. Yeah, sure. Probably a better idea. All right, you go this way, I'll go that way. Yeah. <laughs> so my wisdom, do you want my wisdom or my perception to throw on there? Yeah, your wisdom to throw on there. Plus one. Plus one. Ooh. Uh, so that's a 22. A 22. Um, so the two of you you know, go the opposite direction to try to take in the whole 360 degrees of this, you know, doing what you can to cup your ears and let it all come in. Mm -hmm. um, Neb, well, let's start with Maeve. Uh, Maeve, off in your direction, even though it's hard to see through the trees, you do think it slopes up um, where you are, you know, off in your direction, off in that side. Um, Neb, on your side, it feels like it's sloping down and you get a little bit of hearing water, running water. Uh, how far away do I think this might be? It's faint and hard to tell. Okay. Um, it's within hearing distance, which has got to be fairly close. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, determining where it is, I could take a survival check. Um, uh, that'll have you do plus four, please. What is the visibility in this place? So out in the open with moonlight, you can see, you know, your 30 to 40 feet kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. With dark vision, obviously you could see further. Once you head into the woods, um, we're gonna be dealing with darkness as well as some obscurity. Um, yeah. As you listen, things are just bouncing off the trees and it's you just can't tell where exactly this is, but you obviously feel it's down the slope somewhere. I'll relay that to everybody. I don't notice anything else of particular note though. Nothing that really explains if this is a special place or if just whatever this was got tired. You hear like a, a babbling brook or something? Yeah, maybe like a, a stream or a, a, a river, you know, that, you know how rich people will have like that little waterfall out in front of their, their houses with the rock and, and everything. It sounds kind of like that. Should um, we investigate? I mean, if it's fresh water, that'd be nice. So it can't hurt to take a look as long as it's not too far. I'm just not exactly sure. Did it sound like a, a river or did it sound like a the ocean? I, I, I'm going to see if I can see anything. And, and okay. Silas is going to just uh, fly up higher. And mm -hmm. um, and what I'm looking for is um, the absence of trees and any kind of discernible straight line pattern. Or, or, you know, like th th that kind of thing. Um, you can roll that if you'd like. Yep. Yeah, and I'll point. Um, it's it's and that, there somewhere. Uh, let's see, perception. That's a zero. A zero. Um, <clears throat> you don't have any luck. It must be, whatever it is, it must be fairly small. Uh, the trees just don't part, or the trees are so big, um, they just don't part enough for you to grasp the geography from above. But considering you can hear it and can't see it, it's probably not the ocean. Yeah, I think it's, it is a river stream of some sort. If this is anything like the woods back home, there are going to be a lot of those. Well, it usually means life. Life and fresh water could be good. You know, I was a geospatial surveyor, and I know my way around. What was. <laughs> and, uh, of course you were. What the heck is that? Of course you were. <laughs> what, 
Okay, I, I need to ask because I understand the words geospatial surveyor. What exactly did you do? That sounds amazing. <laughs> Well, using GPS and <laughs> geographic information system, uh, I would plot coordinates to gather data on features such as rivers and roads and a site yeah. of using computer aided. Oh, and she like just kind of goes on to this like, <laughs> never heard her talk this part. <laughs> Neb is in rapt attention as always, oh. hanging on every word. Uh, but with that, Robin, I don't know, like maybe survival or something. She yeah, absolutely. Searching for it. Advanced survival, please, Robin, with all of your experience in okay. geospatial <laughs> surveying. <laughs> there it is. I love it. Survival uh, tracker, PhD. That's a 22. <laughs> it's a 22. Fantastic. With that 22, you go and listen. And the, you know, echolocation geo surveying of your brain that developed over the however many weeks, yeah. months that you did yeah. that, um, kind of is able to kind of triangulate. And you're pretty sure it's, it's kind of just down this ridge and off to the right. Uh, and it's kind of cutting across. So you feel like it'd be fairly easy to stumble upon. Um, you agree that it's not, it's not a, a big river. It is probably more of a, a creek or a brook, that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so you said I found it, or you 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 think you know where it is? You think it's just um, down the ridge and off to the right? You, I mean, yeah. She's like listening in. Here. She's looking at yeah. the the ground. She's a well. Yeah. How, think, how the rain moves yeah. gives you clues. Yeah. I think I could find it if you guys really are interested. Definitely. We should. So, yeah. Just. The last time we saw a, a place that had been decimated by a large creature, it was at a river, correct? A lot of things have happened at rivers, if you think about it. Mm, in this good point. trip. Do you think it was trying to head something off? Or? So we're just saying there's a big alligator? or like, I mean, like... <laughs> Probably. I'm not afraid of no crocodile or alligator. I, I, I guess, like, I mean, I understand the water thing, although, you know, with all the snow that we've had, like, I feel like we've had plenty of water as long as you avoid the yellow stuff. But, um, like, what, why are we so interested in a creek? I might have missed something. I'm interested in anything, I think, at this point. Like, anything. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's that, but also, yeah. that's what a DM I, likes to that, use. That's I'm kind perhaps of this... <laughs> what I'm worried about, uh, uh, I'm, Teresa. <laughs> I'm assuming that we're thinking about maybe stopping soon if not now for the night and maybe taking a little bit of a survey of what is immediately around us might be a good idea okay but nothing specifically about a creek or a small stream yeah, not okay. unless someone has run out of water and is looking for potentially a fresh source well, it'll be where any creatures would go yeah it can it'll be be bodies and of we water. want to be where the creatures are going while we're trying to sleep well, not necessarily, but, but what's it's good what, to know, and and then you can follow that to the to larger water. That's theory. true. At this point, if there's nothing here, are we deciding whenever we go that we're heading to the water? Or are we going to go towards the train station? Whichever way, at least this will lead down to a beach. Also, I just I'm curious why the thing would have disappeared. Yeah, me too. Like Unless. It heard the water. If if it was the air creature, mm -hmm. and it heard the water and got scared off, or something. I don't know. I don't yeah. know how any of this works. No, none of us do. <laughs> like, like, I barely do. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Robin, if you want to, I'll come with you if you want to go check that out, and we, we can just kind of look around in this area, see if there's any other. Maybe clues. we should all stay together. Yeah. I, I, why did I just say that? What have you all done to me? <laughs> We're rubbing off on you, Maeve. <laughs> Hopefully it's not like last time where we came to a body of water that none of us could cross and then I crossed it and got <laughs> wet and ran into an invisible thing. So I'm not crossing whatever this water is. It's not going to be me. No. Um, all right, let's go. <laughs> all right. You follow Robin, who's listening and looking and... Mm -hmm you know, tasting the wind and doing all those things, <laughs> uh, makes her way down this sort of ridge. Every once in a while, it's a little bit of a skid on the, the loose, wet snow, but you make your way down. Um, and it is indeed a, a creek. It's only about eight feet wide, 
Um, it's not super fast. In fact, you know, the edges are frozen over where the water pools in places. Um, there's one large log that has kind of fallen down over it. So there's a little, little passage of a bridge there. Um, looks like a brook. Does it look like this continues down slope towards the water or can we see it like heading in a different direction that would potentially intersect with wherever our mystery was heading towards? So, um, investigation check, please. Okay. <clears throat> I'd like to, can I help with this? Absolutely, and... you can. Your okay. intelligence bonus. Uh, which is a plus three. Perfect. Uh, so 15. So 15. So the two of you together, you know, Robin's listening and tasting and giving you information and you're trying to like logically put that together. Um, it is, you know, it's going down slope and, and, and logically knowing that's probably going to lead to a lake or the ocean of some kind. Um, up slope, it does feel like it kind of goes around and curves, especially if you, you know, if you compare some of your information with Maeve, who was checking out the rise, the, the rising slope over there, it does feel like it kind of makes a little bit of a dead end around where this destruction stopped. Hmm. Well, I don't know what to do next unless you want me to start talking to people. Things. Objects? Oh. I'm sorry, I'm having old lady brain. Why were we doing this? <laughs> Yeah. The, the river in specific was just kind of take a look around where we might be camping for the night, but also like if we could get any other clues. Ah, all right. Camping for the night sounds good. Anyone else? I mean, are, are we don't want to try to make it to the station. Like, I mean, do we get any sense how far away the station might be? I mean, you can give me, a, I mean, I guess that's a perception of time and distance. Mm -hmm. I'll Can't, throw it out there. To, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, I was just going to say when I'm flying up, like, yeah. do do I see any lights see in the distance? Do I see nope. any openings? You don't see ocean. Anything? You don't see. You guys are in the middle of a forest. Mm. Okay. The other thing is that the the Fae can't cross running water. Hmm. Sometimes some people say, depending who you're talking to. So I thought that was like you know Dracula. <laughs> Like, that's the fae, where, too. Where do you think the myth came from? I don't know. Dracula's not a fae. <laughs> yeah. It's all it's all the supernatural creatures. Yeah. So, which side should we be on? Well, it well, depends uh, where they're chasing you. It depends on, do we think this creature cared about us at all and was just doing its own thing? Or is doing something in relation to us? Because it looks like the path kind of stops when it's going around that way so uh, i don't know yeah i'm, I'm just saying if that's, yeah. if that's the case and it may not be because i don't know how any of this works here yeah me but neither. if the things i've been told are true <laughs> it's a good thing to know if we ever have to get away from something that we don't want to be near absolutely might be a good rule to know if it's a rule but rules are also meant to be broken, so. So are we hunkering down for the night? Yes. I mean, shall we do it here by the brook? Probably well, we went through so much trouble to find it. So <laughs> I think we should. I know, it's like <laughs> uh, as, as we're kind of standing here, I want to take a look around. Do I see any any birds, but I'm not looking for like a small bird. I'm looking for like an owl or um, a bird of prey, something that would have fairly good eyesight. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a snowy white owl up at the top of one of these trees. Ooh. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, be quiet for a second. I'm gonna look up at it. Hi, w would you be interested in a couple of berries for some information? It turns its head 270 degrees to kind of look down at you. 
<laughs> sort of hops off of its branch, opens its wings, and sort of glides down to a slightly lower branch. And I'll pull out the, the last of the good berries that I've got from the most re recent batch. You know, the last time I tried to give this to a, a big bird, things went really bad. So let's try this with a smaller bird. And I'll step a few feet away and put some berries down and step back and say, there's a big swath of destruction back over here that I'm sure you saw. Do you have any idea what happened? He pecks a little bit at the berries and kind of steps back. Doesn't seem that interested in the berries. You do notice his head, he's looking at you, but it keeps swiveling over towards Pivim. And back towards you. I'll I'll swivel. Like at one point, we'll both just look at him at the same time. Um, it just twitches a little bit. Uh, are you using specifically your speak with beast stuff? Yeah, I, yeah. I've cast okay. speak with animals. Okay, great. Um, Sorry, so, should have probably specified no worries. That. It's all good. <laughs> he's he's happy to respond now. He kind of looks. He goes. He, you get the impression that berries are fine. He'd love a small bit of meat. He looks over at Pippin. Pippin's about the size of a house cat. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I will very intentionally not look back at Pippin and ask, <laughs> but ask everybody, hey, anyone got any um, jerky or... Actually, that's the only meat that I can think of that anyone would still have. I, I mean, do, in a messenger you bag. I think me and Silas do, yeah. <laughs> like, it, like it's it's my meat. I'm just it's trying to... It's your meat? Like... Well, no, I'm just saying, like, parting with the little meat that I have left <laughs> well, is I'm a sacrifice, and I just want to make sure I understand what this sacrifice is for. I'm trading meat for information, and I'll, That's indicate, the, so, I'll indicate the owl. With the owl? Pivim, Pivim's going to, you know, tap his lips as well and cast his own little speaking with animals things and he walks up and you hear him go <laughs> some sort of very angry owl speech while he shakes his finger at the owl and neb you over here don't you dare i am not a, i am not carrying for your dinner he's very angry about it speaking and i turn owl. to whoever's closest to me and i go is it wrong that that's kind of adorable <laughs> Well, you can't tell what they're talking about. Like, exactly. you talking I just about? see him really yeah. angrily. If you want to know what they're talking about, I'll, 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 Silas, I'll tell you later. G g g give me, give me your meat. The the owl sort of, you know, feathers its feathers and ah ah kind of begins to continue to like talk back to uh, to Pibum. I telekinetically float a uh, the smallest piece of beef jerky that I still have in the pack <laughs> over to Nib. And I'll, I'll take it and too. come on over and go, all right, you two, come on, break it up, break it up, break it up. Uh, here, <laughs> here. It, it's a little dried, but he'll take you won't it. have to go hunting for it. He'll take it right out of your hand. He said, um, this is good. Uh, most of the meat I find is frozen. Nice to have. Yeah, I mean, that's been in my, uh, you know, pocket, so. Keeping it warm. We've kept it very well kept, just in case we had to come across someone that needed a snack. I'm sorry I don't have more, but most of our stuff is frozen too. Um, si but Silas takes the pouch that he had and he like turns it upside down and starts shaking it. <laughs> nothing's coming out, but it's an illusion. Okay, gotcha. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm all out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not even going to roll. The owl believes you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the owl is fooled. So while you're enjoying a snack and ignoring our friend, and I'll just kind of <laughs> put a hand on Pivim's shoulder, like, eh, it's okay. Yeah, every uh, once in a while, he looks over, you see his talons twitch a little bit. It's a big meal. That would be hard to, you know, he'd be hard mm -hmm. to get, but he's hungry. Uh, let me give you a bit of advice. He might be small right now, but if you go for him, you're not going to find him to be small anymore. Trust me. <laughs> anyway. Pivim goes, yeah, you listen to her. <laughs> I'll turn in something that could eat you lickety split. In just to herself, Neb thinks, you know, if you'd asked me a couple of days ago if I was ever going to have an argument between a gnome and an owl about who's going to eat who, <laughs> and no one would have believed me. And then finally back to the house. Uh, so just so we don't keep you too long, 
do you know anything about what happened with the trees and everything back over there? Yes. Yeah, big winds. Knock everything down. All the mice ran. Been hungry for a day. Did you see, was there anything weird about the wind? Was it caused by something or someone? Like, that That looks weird. Out of nowhere. Uh, came by, stopped. My home is safe, as you can see. Good. When it stopped, did it just disappear? Did it turn into something? It seemed to rise up. Rise up into the air. Like an actual tornado would. And I kind of glance over at Maeve, and then I'll, I'll say that not in Owl, like an actual tornado would. <laughs> I turn to you and go, hoo, 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 hoo. And then, oh, sorry. Um, they said it, they're basically describing a tornado, and then I've seen those videos of storm chasers and how tornadoes, when they leave, they just kind of go and get sucked back into the clouds. That's kind of what yeah. they're... Maybe if it was you say that, spaceship. Do you say that in English to Maeve? Yeah. Okay. Although I think the, it's both, it works I, for both. I, you know what? It's one of those things in where it might be up to you. Fantastic. This, well, this we'll is just one say, of those spells that's just open just to interpretation. Open interpretation. <laughs> in this, moment, might be able to hear that side of the conversation and yeah, and yeah, just yeah. I can get that side. Of, so yeah. it 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 goes storm chasing. That sounds exciting. Oh yes. No, thank you. <laughs> it's very. I've been told by someone who's very knowledgeable that it's very exciting until suddenly you're being chased. <laughs> and that's not so exciting. I'm, I'm very fast, says the owl. Are you I'm threatening no it now? Uh, okay, so do you have any... Moves its shoulder. So you've got your home here, so you must be very familiar with these hunting grounds. Is Yes. Is there anything else around here odd? We're, we're kind of on the hunt for something ourselves, and we're just... We've lost the trail. Um, give me a persuasion check. I, I would May love... I help in any way with this? How, how, how would you help in this how moment? How would I help? How um, would you help? I'm really good at helping yeah. to convince people of stuff. I will um, so help I might be able to help, help okay. Neb shape her argument. Okay in a good way okay. um, based on the side of it that I'm hearing um, and the, the the body, not that I, can, I can't read owl body language um, that's not it's, a, it's doing the owl thing yeah. <laughs> doing the owl thing it's very adorable I know a dance too um, <laughs> Neb would be receptive to this though because like she did this a lot with Silas on the on the both the, 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 pers the persuasion and the deception side so like yeah. working mm -hmm. with someone who's only hearing half okay. the conversation uh, so, you know, I was going to ask about, like, the whole area, since, you know, I, I think owls have a pretty big range that they go by, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we'll, what we'll do is that since you're going to be doing the persuasion, it'll be your persuasion check, but we can add Maeve's charisma. Okay, great. This to it. I would, she's going to help teach you how to use your inflection, and you will then... Silas oh, taught me to lie. Maeve's gonna teach me to uh, connect with people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you please yeah. roll that for me? I have a plus uh, five to persuasion. And what is your uh, and I have a plus four charisma? Plus nine. Nice. Together we can talk good to an owl. Um, <laughs> Maeve helps you get each little like you know you guys go over like exactly how you're gonna say it and where you're gonna like wink and then move your shoulders with him in that kind of way. Um, and as you talk to him, the owl gets very excited. Um, he says, and he sort of says, oh, oh, maybe you can help. You'll help me. Yes, you'll help. Uh, well, you have to tell us what we need to help with, and we can try. He flies down, and he says, frozen meat, lots of it. Won't be free till spring. I can make it not frozen for you, if you can lead <laughs> us to it. When you say lots, though... How, how much? Uh, he goes, I mean, he goes, more than for a lifetime. Carcasses somewhere? What's going on here? Uh, and I'll turn to everybody and go, um, he would like to get some help thawing out some meat. And while mm. that sounds a little grisly, we we might be able to learn something from the, the carcasses. 
I mean, I, I hate to say Let's it, but the... learn something from the carcass. Do we need to be to we're going to get can you talk to dead zombies. people too? I can... Okay, okay. First off, Silas, I don't know. We can always try. Maeve, I know, and, and Feroza, yes, also disgusting. But the last time one of these creatures came through, a lot of what I learned was from finding the pack of wolves that I found. That's true. That's true. It's true. So he wants us to go help him thaw some carcasses for information. That's what it sounds like. Or at least that the carcasses might give us information too. I, You heard what I asked him. Okay, well, Robin, pack up your fireball, I guess, and let's go. <laughs> uh, do we need to, to go? Are we... It's nighttime. It, it's yeah, he's hopping. I mean, he's wide awake. This is uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, the owl. Say that maybe, and I'm like, yeah. yeah, when they're uh, awake. Yeah. How I'll ask the owl. How far is it? He goes. Because my friends are nowhere near as fast as you are. Short flight. Short flight. Short flight. Okay. Short flight. But how about on legs? Well, <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. He, he's saying short flight. I mean, I I can follow him. Pivot, and I can follow him. Do we all want to go? But I want to take a look. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. That's the spirit. You've been outvoted, and I will. I will look at the owl, and I will say, "You've got a deal. Yeah. Just don't fly too fast, so that we can keep up." So he flies around the corner onto the river, and says, "We follow this. Follow, follow. I follow the river, everybody." And yeah, I will right. lead the way, keeping an eye on our new snowy owl friend. It is difficult terrain as you all okay. try to hike either in the water. I'm gonna fly alongside. Fly the alongside, <laughs> um, you know, on either side of the bank, you know, trying to, you know, your foot falls through some of the ice and you mm. pull it out. We're not gonna play any cold damage or any of that. You guys will figure out your ways to keep it. Your, your lighted hand can dry people off, whatever you need to do. But it is kind of a slow, hard trek after a long, hard day already um, as you follow this owl, which probably would have been a short flight. It keeps going ahead and coming back and going ahead. You, he and Piven continue to kind of like, slow down, you go faster, blah, 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 as they continue this, uh, this conversation. Um, it takes probably half hour to get okay. to where things part and there is quite a sizable lake ahead of you. Where the river runs into it um, is still unfrozen, but the rest of it across is, is ice um, with big banks of snow along the side. The owl flies out to about 20 feet beyond this outlet and lands on the ice and begins to peck down at the ice. Oh, it's in the ice. It's fish? Or it's something that fell into the river, uh, the oh, water, and then. Wait, yeah. how big? Hey, hey, Silas, do you mind taking a, a little flight over yeah. and seeing what you can see through the ice? Uh, it, 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 tell your owl friend to like show me where it is. I guess. Uh, He's I dancing think... right on top of. This oh, okay. Well, spot yeah. On the ice. I'm going to like. I'm, I'm going to float out there just kind of like hovering like upright at first. Mm -hmm. But then when I get a little bit closer, I'm just going to turn and get my face, like my body parallel to the, to the ice and like look down to see as much as I can see. Perfect. Um, the rest of you stand, you know, it's quite cold. Now at night you have your, your warming things, but you're trying to just kind of, you know, you're warm from the exertion of walking as well. Just trying to keep yourself there as you watch Silas, Float soundlessly over the top. Silas, from the light from your single eye as it hits this ice, you begin to see faces and parts of bodies tangled and entwined, all just about six inches to a foot beneath the ice. How many are we talking? <laughs> what do you see, Silas? <laughs> More than you're excited to count. Okay. Oh. Um, so, um, I'm going to just kind of swallow and then I'm going to, you see Silas kind of float up parallel and then he slowly brings himself upright. He looks down at the owl and goes, <laughs> and then he starts to float back to where everybody else is without saying a word. <laughs> All right. What what what's in it? The owl has no idea what this means and bobs along, continuing to sort of 
get look excited back at you, Neb. Is, so, is it like, is, is we're it like coming, we're figuring. Yeah, we're yeah. figuring it out. We're figuring it out. It's people, like a whole lot of dead people. Wait, oh. like humans, like us? Uh, well, little hard to say. I mean, they were, you know, could have been like more mm. like the Morlocks, but like they definitely humanoid down in the the ice, um, and like a whole lot of them. What? This is just a lake. Is it like a ship? It's like a tomb. What? Mm. Like bodies have washed up and and ended up in this lake? Uh, did I see any um, like signs of uh, wounds or anything? Or you want to go back uh, out? That... I mean, I, I didn't. In my glance, I didn't in catch glance, like no, you missing didn't catch... arms no. or anything. It yeah. would be hard to tell because you know. Also, you lose visibility as they dip down, so you're not sure. Like, is that leg that I see attached to that head? Sure. Which is that? But I didn't arm, openly see any anyway. like can wound, I wound this... of like a leg no. being cut off. Or can, like I, can I pass this something again? Which is, wasn't the zombie town near a creek? Is it possible that these have washed down from there? Maybe. I mean, it's very possible, yes. That's a long way to go. Well, I mean, they're dead. It's, I don't think they're not on the trip. This, this could also be a, a second bunch of them. I don't, I don't know. But it's interesting that we are seeing... Or maybe these are just the mannequins from there, that the extras that they didn't need, and we're just looking at I mean, maybe... Mannequins we, that are not well, paper. Maybe. Whatever. Whatever it is, Liz tries to convince herself, <laughs> fully expecting. Yeah, Maybe whatever. I can chop one out right now, and we can just pull it out and see what it is. Yeah, yeah. Neb will light up her hand and say, I, "Whatever it is, we at least owe the owl." We we owe the owl what? Getting all killed here? <laughs> well, we don't have to uncover everything. I mean, half a half an arm is going to be more than this owl needs. Well, 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 yeah, but uh, like, what, what was this dead. owl giving us again, real quick? It brought us here, gave us information. What information? <laughs> about <laughs> how to get here and about the, the the wind, the tornado, and no. also I. We I, already I, knew all that information. <laughs> we we, we didn't have confirmation. Also, also. Are we believing yes. this owl? Uh, yes. Also, <laughs> Silas, I. I don't believe in coincidences anymore. And here we are. At the That's end a of lovely thing to say when, like, you don't actually know whether something's actually a coincidence or not. Well, of all of the weird things that's happened to us in the last 13 days that seemed like it could have been a coincidence, how much of it wasn't a coincidence? I, I, okay. Using that logic, the, uh, you know, most likely outcome of this is we thaw these things out and then they snatch and they they come they come you know back up and then we have to kill them and then something whatever you know if we grab a mirror shard or whatever we've just opened up the ice and all these things come come rushing out at us or like they did at that been, blasted town. Whatever's we're been gonna, collecting them. You know what? All of that is true, which is why we're just going to have to be extra careful. And I'm going to start walking out onto the ice. Uh, as as she does this. Yes, Robin. Robin's going to step forward and be like, you know, I've always been very good at hide and seek. I'm very good seeker. And she's going to cast, unknowingly, she's going to be casting oh. Sea Invisibility. Ooh. Oh. As I this, love all of her reactions. Oh. As scared. this sets out along. You look to your left and there is a woman standing <laughs> about five feet away at the edge of the water. Looking right Watch at you. It. What? <laughs> Do you react? He does, yes. What her eyes what? widen as she, as she realizes you can see her. And she turns a claw hand, cocks her head, and reaches out. Please roll initiative. Oh! oh. Robin! 
<laughs> okay. Are we all rolling in the show? Just, <laughs> just Robin for now. Oh. I mean, we, we can all roll it if you want, but okay. you guys are, as of now, unaware. I mean, I think as soon as, if I've stepped out and Robin has done this and gone, oh, you gads, I would have at least stopped to turn to look. <laughs> Oh I was god. honestly, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I mean, was it was it Robin that her, said that? Her teeth are long and jagged and sharp. Her her skin is devoid of any color. I, I mean, it's not even pale. It's just clear, practically gray. Um, all right, give me some initiatives. Uh, twenty three. Robin, twenty three. Nice, Robin. Yeah. You may need twenty one. Natural twenty plus one. Natural hey! twenty one for Veruza. <laughs> Uh, Maeve is a 19. Maeve at 19. You, boy, you guys are wow. good. I rolled a 19, which gives me an 18. 18 <laughs> for, uh, sorry, for Neb yeah. and Silas. Eight. Oh, right yeah. down there. Ooh. Fabulous. Okay. Um, when, can, can I react to something that Robin said? Not uh, knowing yeah. what she's doing. Which yeah. is, she said, I was always really good at hide and seek. I was yes. really good at seeking. And I can, can Maeve react with... I was really good at hiding and sort of slip into the shadows. Go ahead, I will give you that. Give me a stealth check. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, That's amazing. Uh, 25. 25. You are very, very well hidden. Um, Excellent. Let's put that here. You're at a 25. Okay, Robin, you get to go first as this clawed hand, you know, it was here. As you say, Gads and her eyes open. <sighs> And that clawed hand begins to reach out towards you. What do you want to do? Uh, I think Robin would kind of trip back, and I will take the prone for this. But as she, as she falls back, she like maybe there's like a rock or a piece of ice or something within her grasp, or something that she can reach for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and just out of instinct, like she's yes. just gonna, ah! and she's gonna catapult a rock at this creature because <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. Absolutely. Go ahead and give me an, okay. uh, I guess, improvised or if you have catapult, whatever you're using. Uh, yes, it's a. Fantastic. Um, uh, okay, so it needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw. <clears throat> that is a natural 20. Oh, okay. That's a really um, nice roll for me. Sorry. <laughs> On a failed save. Uh, this strike is off something object. Uh, okay. On a save. I'm oh, sorry, just reading this. On a save, must make it experience. It failed save the object. Okay, I think I completely missed because I don't see it saying that on a failed or on a save okay. that it's going to take anything. So just kind of yeah. far left. <laughs> yeah. As you, as you scramble back in the ground. Um, all of you are noticing this happening, but you have no idea what she's responding to, what's going on, so there there is no reaction from you as of yet. Um, it is its turn. Um, it reaches down with this clawed hand, uh, reaching towards you and grabs onto your ankle, or attempts to grab onto your ankle. Ooh, with a dirty 20 to hit? Uh-huh. Oh! What? Do I do? <laughs> Who said, oh? I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Oh, um, oh yes. Um, as a reaction, let me just make sure I get this right. This is my first time doing this. Go ahead. Okay. Um, as a reaction, oh, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Uh, Robin, like, tucks in her legs and her arms and throws her backpack over her. Yes! yes! Oh my gosh. Tuck and roll! Tuck and roll! Oh my gosh. And I get a plus four to my AC, which okay. is 22. Okay! Okay! <laughs> so, as she comes down, beginning about to grab your ankle, you pull it away, her nails hit into the snow Ooh. just below you and rake through. You can see the snow itself. Um, the grass or whatever is underneath it, you notice it withers a little as her, her nails scrape through and she pulls it back. Um, but she still stands there. Interesting. <laughs> wow. Do we hear, hear do we hear the words? That. What did you she all say? Hear Interesting. 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 Oh. <gasps> You hear that 
from somewhere within your midst. We will go. We see the anything in the snow around Robin happening. Um, if you were looking carefully, you would notice, you know, the the spot where the her nails dragged through the um, the okay. ground. Um, only Robin can sense this at the moment, but she's yep. floating. So no she is not making any contact with the ground. Who? This woman? Like the creature. This woman creature. And I'm the only one who can see her? You're the only one who can see her. Oh, shoot. Um, uh, and she is just literally at your feet as you are tucked up inside your backpack. Um, underneath your backpack. Uh, at this moment, you watch her. And as that, she heard that sort of intake of breath, the whole ground begins to just rumble a little bit. The ice begins to crack. Silas, as you whip around to look, follow one crack as it goes towards this pile of frozen bodies and begins to break apart. The owl gets very excited. I'm, I'm or Sita. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's dinner time. Huh. Back to you, Robin. I mean, oh. everyone else, we'll let, we'll let everyone else. I mean, we could say this. I mean, yeah, actually, yeah, it is back to you, Robin, because you're top of the round. So we're going to let all of you in this initiative round have some kind of a reaction. You're not quite sure to what yet, but Robin, you are top of the round. Back up to you. I, uh, would, mm -hmm. I would love to at least seeing the cracks. I yes. mean, Neb doesn't really know what's going on and sees Robin panicking about something, but the cracks are way more than she wanted. And she knows these things are under the ice. Yes. So I would mm -hmm. at least like to use my move to make sure I'm not on the ice anymore. And I'm going to yes. yell out to the owl and be like, yeah, you, uh, you don't want to be on the ice right now. Get off the ice, get off the ice. Cool. Robin, top of round. Okay. Um, I can't do anything in this position except for as a bonus action to get out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So my bonus action is to, you said she's five feet from me? Yeah, she's right next to you. She's just right at your feet, where your feet would have been. She's right there. Okay. All right. Let, uh, let me see if I can she's, do this. She's sort of hovering almost like Silas was, like she's oh. you know, went down a little bit on her belly, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing, but she's okay. just hovering. Okay. Um, then I'm going to use a bonus action to get away from I put my backpack back on and, <laughs> and kind of screw. I'm going to use half my movement to get up. And then I think, can I use my action to disengage? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, of course you can. Yeah. And yeah, that disengage, I'll use the rest of my movement to get away. To get away. Okay. So that'd be 15 feet. Uh, so Bonus I action. <laughs> <laughs> you poke out, you point, you scramble backwards, getting up to your feet and, and moving away from the spot where she hovers her eyes. Again, wide and deep sockets look towards you, her gray flesh sort of barely holding on to her bones um for ruza you can literally see what this is we can't see anything robin all is of a sudden, freaking the freak out. Like, out all of a sudden we see the owl happy we see the 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 lake start to the lake do starts to crack. crack a little bit and i see robin all of a sudden roll over and tuck up under her backpack which was concerning because we can't see anything that's happening so bruce is just gonna I mean we are one thing we have to remember with this spell stuff is that there are some ver parts of the spells that we do that we may not really understand all that well yet like it's like imagine if you're learning magic you don't know how strong things are yet so you're just going to do them as they come to you instinctively <laughs> so she's going to do something okay how far are we from each other <laughs> i think you're all kind of in a clump right i mean mm -hmm. you're all kind of within five feet of each other yeah. Within a 10, 15 foot, oops, sorry, radius. Okay. Um, that feels so right to you guys? You're, yeah, because you're I would have scrambled back and- Adam, you're yeah. you're hovering within that kind of a sphere? Yeah. Cool. Okay, okay great. Yeah. I might be a little bit outside of that just because I'm in the hiding mode. You're hiding? But okay. not that far. Okay, so uh, Bruce is just, I mean, instinctively, she's just gonna, she's looking around all this cast out knowing she's just gonna run toward i guess the edge of the water or whatever and she's just gonna her axe all of a sudden grows and she's going to reach up and slam it down into the the ground that's right in front of the body of water so from for some reason that's, that's just what she thought to do because she saw that the, that the the axe was sparkling with this electricity and she felt the energy of it and she's she basically 
releases thunder waves. So what you're seeing is you're going to see like all these like ripples of electricity just go <laughs> across the body of water emanating from where she hits the ax. But that also means that each creature in a 15 foot cube has to make a constitution saving throw of 2d8 or you're, pu you're pushed 10 feet away from me. Okay. It depends on how far everybody is. She doesn't, she doesn't know what's going to do this. You know what I mean? So. Fantastic. So um, let's start with all of us uh, mm -hmm. doing our constitution saving throws against this thunder wave. Mm -hmm. 14. As she, as she Thor hammers. <laughs> yeah, she's just like, oh. holy crap, Nev. Sorry. I <laughs> just <laughs> made it. Nice. Oh, I got nice. It. What, do to <laughs> what do we have to clear? 14, she said. 14. Yeah. Ooh, which is exactly good. what I got. Good. Maeve, if you want to say you were outside of the 15 with your hiding, I'm okay mm -hmm. with that. Okay. As long as we okay. then stick to the fact that you're 20 feet away. Sure, I'll take oh. it. Robin, are you still within that 15 feet or did you run I... farther? I probably was on the left side of them mm -hmm. and I probably pushed through them 15 feet. So I'm probably still within that, that range. Okay. You so, still think you're in but it. I, All right. I got a 14. So a 14. Okay. Silas. I got a 16. A 16. Woo! Silas is okay. <laughs> well, we still take half damage, I think, but at least. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you take half? Yeah. You take half as much okay. damage as you push the... uh, Crazy lady, crazy invisible claw lady also makes it. Um, <gasps> but she'll still apologies. take half. But she'll stay take half. So go ahead and roll your damage, Frieza. All right, let's see. Oh my God, it's 12. It's six. Of course. Of course it's 12. Question. Yes. yes. When that wave happens, is any of the snow disturbed and blown up onto her? Um, the what, what, the ice? The, the snow. snow. Oh, the snow? Like, um, is she I covered mean, in snow as that wave uh, blows back at all? Let me find out about that in a moment. I will answer okay. that question in a minute. I want to deal with some of our friends out that way. Yeah, I mean... Okay. So, yes. So, the shockwave comes out. Those of you there are maybe knowing Feruza, seeing the glint of that axe gets you somewhat prepared. Oh. You still take mm -hmm. some of it as it, you know, ricochets towards you. Um, mm -hmm. But you, uh, you're able to kind of hold your ground and, and take a little less. But as this mm -hmm. shockwave moves out, crack, 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 crack. Um, the ice just breaks apart. You begin to see more arms and heads, things flail, but now there is water beneath them as opposed to just ice. Um, what was it? It was 12 was the, the, they did not make their save. So it was 12 was the damage? Yes. And they get pushed, 12, right? 12 if you fail it. 12 if, if you, you fail, fail it and they get pushed. Yeah. Yes? Great. Mm -hmm. So not only from that blast it's almost like a like a reverse tidal wave or something you know mm -hmm. and, and it the, a wave them. sort of pushes them up and out you see a couple of these mm -hmm. bodies kind of go flying up in the air uh definitely pushed back away from you and the ice has broken to expose more like iceberg flows of ice and and lake dark inky black lake in between and you hear um, a thunderous boom like Whoa. yes the owl is nowhere to be seen. It has flown off somewhere into the dark. Okay, okay, good. It wants good. nothing to do with you anymore. It's going to wait until everything's done and there is carrion to this devour. Is a smart owl, smart owl. Who, who's ever it is. Run. <laughs> it, you, maybe the last thought you hear is that was a nice conversation. I'm sure she will be better meat, uh, is uh, what you hear as it flies That's out of your range of perception. That's fine. Um, all right, Fruz, anything else? Um. That is all, except for just that she lifts up her axe and she's just completely surprised by what just happened. She did not expect that to happen, so now she knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. I'm just checking something. Uh, but Maeve, mm -hmm. you are hidden and you are up next. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how far is she from me? Just checking. Well, actually, the, the first part is was there snow that blew onto her because right that's right that's right hold on i'm just checking one quick thing here actually that cool all right um snow from the blast of that 
will say you were paying attention. Snow did seem to hit some sort of force, but it immediately falls off. You're not, you know, it doesn't land on her and give you like a perfect, okay. um, you know, silhouette. But you, you notice that like snow hit air and dropped. Um, okay. So I'll give you that it gave you a sense of there being something in the air there. Robin, what happened? I mean, okay. maybe we start there. <laughs> Ghost! <laughs> What? what you would say. <laughs> I was very Where? creepy, creepy ghost. And she's gonna be like pointing as she's like <laughs> jumping back. Okay. Um where she's pointing isn't gonna give me enough, I don't think. Um Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on, so I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my action for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna ready. Mm -hmm. No, I'll hold my action. I'm gonna hold my action. I'll hold my turn. Okay, hold. Um one of these creatures out in the lake gets its arm up on top of a uh at iceberg flow. It is 10 feet farther back than where it was before, but it pulls itself up onto an iceberg flow. Um, and you can see again, it's broken body reaching and pulling itself forward as it attempts to make its way your direction, Neb. So in shock at everything that's just happened, especially after getting hit with the, the wave from Feruza, as her wave hits Neb, that's when she just completely turns into that uh, blue and purple nebula form. As a <laughs> bonus action, I'm going, <laughs> ah! uh, and then uh, seeing uh, stuff coming out, hearing about Ghost, I want to use my movement to get uh, away from the lake. And as I do, a ghost? Where? Where? It's there, it's there. Can't you see it? I can't, but I'm going to try and I would, I'm going to look into the forest and I'm going to summon some fireflies. And, I'm, and so uh, wherever Robin is pointing, basically from the start of her in that uh -huh. direction uh -huh. is where I'm going to place it because I'm like, uh -huh. I, it's somewhere we'll do, in there. We'll allow it with a disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, to... so it's it's just a twenty foot cube that happens. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's, so that's a big cube. It's Great, a, it's a huge cube. Now she gets to make, right. or if anything is in there, throw. uh, yeah, it's a dexterity saving throw, uh, DC fifteen. Twenty, dirty twenty. I'm so sorry. Mm. All right, my fireflies swirl around. Uh, they're gonna stay there. Okay. Um. That's the sound she makes. <sighs> <laughs> I, I echo that sound because yeah, Neb, Neb can do something on the bonus action when she transforms, but if she can't see the thing, I don't think she thinks to, to shoot at it. So yeah, she, okay. she's going to, but she'll, your fireflies you know are yeah, swarming around trying to find something to latch onto. <laughs> I do see that zombie coming out of the water though, right? You do, yes. I'm going to. About 30 feet away. Yeah. Well, I guess it was 15, so like 25 feet away. Yeah, I'm gonna use my uh, my attack on it because I can do that as part of the bonus action when I yeah. Um, so there we go. Uh, so I'm, I just grab my rock and I sling it at this thing, <laughs> which turns into this uh, arrow of multicolored light. Dirty twenty to hit. Dirty will hit absolutely. Awesome. Uh, it's gonna be ten. I think that is radiant damage. It's been a hard, yes, radiant damage. Woo, 10 radiant damage, okay. Um, that slams into it. It's already broken from Feruza's thunder attack. Um, mm -hmm. And as it, it blasts into it, it the whole thing kind of lights up. It's still, however, seems to be pulling itself in your direction as best it can, but it, it did not, it didn't like that. 
That was bad. Well, you know what? I don't like it either. So, and that's that's me. Okay, great. Um, it's scary lady time. Oh. <gasps> okay, so first of all, um, it might... Robin, I'd like a wisdom saving throw. Oh boy. Uh, twenty-two. Twenty-two. Um, as it keeps its gaze on you and its jaw begins to crack and it opens its mouth wide and continues to breathe in this uh, raspy way. You can feel the fear start to rise up in your throat, but with your experience and you just sit there and think, I'm a geographical spatial surveyor, goddammit. <laughs> And you are able to suppress this sort of feeling that comes over you from from the contortions. That she was that is a making. spell, perchance? Um, or an attack of some sort? What would I call that? Ooh. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's an action. Of okay. I mean, I I don't know if it's. I don't a... think I don't think it's a spell. I, think I, I, I okay okay because I, I don't know what I what know, the I'm magic is think. special about it, but about the invisibility. No, Sometimes it would become. It's... Uninvisible if... Gotcha, gotcha. No, nothing, oh, okay. nothing, nothing yet like that is that. going to make it uninvisible. This okay, is, okay, this okay, is okay. a slightly different deal, but I know okay. what you're going for. Okay. Uh, yes, no, it's still remaining invisible, uh, but okay. you are not frightened by it. You have it. held in your fear dealing okay. with this uh, evil-looking mm. face. Um, it floats forward, coming closer to you, Robin. Okay. Um... Another one of these scary corpses climbs out of the water onto the ice, beginning to make its way towards you. It gets about 10 feet. You know, these two guys are probably 15 feet away from you. Silas, mm -hmm. you're up next. How many, um, how many do I see coming out of the water? Only two so far. Only two so far. I don't see any other movement past them. Sure. I mean, past them, the whole water is roiling and there's arms and legs and heads and things. There's definitely a ton more out there, but there's only two that seem to have sort of escaped the water and are trying to make their way towards you. So. Um, okay. Does it look like um, just because, again, I, I kind of had like the other half round or whatever to see the, the crack. Mm -hmm. Does it look like they are struggling with the water? Yes. The, okay. This it's They're not... Yeah, you know, they're slow. They're, they're not by like it. Michael Phelps. Like no, no, they're no, just no, come, no. coming straight at us. Yeah, no. yeah, got it. Okay. Um, okay. Um, That'd be a horrifying zombie. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a Michael Phelps zombie. Yeah. Um, just like a fast swimming zombie. That that's extra. Oh, yeah, no. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Oh All right. my gosh. I am going to, so at this point in time, uh, still cannot see whatever this um, entity is. Not yet. Um, oh no. All right, so then um, Silas is going to, um, I'm going to be listening also uh, very, uh, you know, diligently. Okay. But, um, but I am going to um, say, all right, can't, uh, and he, and he's floating just a little bit up, and he puts both hands to his temples, and he's like, "All right, I guess I don't have to be able to see it." And then you hear him under his breath just start to whisper something in like some other kind of language, and then okay. um, and and I am doing this um, anything within sixty feet. Now that I know that something is there, I don't have to be able to see it, gotcha. and it needs to make a. Um, uh, let's see which kind of save it is a wisdom saving throw and the dc for that is 16 wisdom uh that is a 15 okay just so me. it is going to take um let's see it's gonna be much so ooh, nice rolls um it's gonna take 18 points mm -hmm. of psychic damage Woo! Ooh, and nice. it is going to immediately use its reaction if it still has that yes. to to move as far as its speed will allow away from me. Okay. And um, I have positioned myself in a way that wherever I thought this creature was around Robin anyway. Okay. That away from me would mean out over the water. Gotcha. Okay. Um, 
as you, you know, kind of get by Robin between what you think wherever it is and Robin, uh, Robin, you watch as, let's see, um, as it almost as if its muscles and body are working against its will, it sort of floats, you know, contorting backwards. Uh, how far did you say? Uh, let's see, as much as its speed. Its speed, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, all it, like as if it's blown out over the water, um, you know, a good 40 feet away now, um, back at that space. It sort of stops in midair, kind of holding like this, like in those old horror movies, you know, floating up in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, good show, anything Silas. <laughs> <laughs> anything else, Silas? And, yeah, and then as a bonus action, um, the two that are coming up through, mm -hmm. um, you see that uh, Silas actually, um, that like around where uh, kind of the, the water is starting to meet, um, like some of the bits of ice and snow, like you see, just kind of start to swirl together. And it looks like, uh, you know, um, if, if there were hands, it would look like somebody was packing a really big snowball. Um, and so it's a you know, basketball sized snowball and it just floats into the air and it just just like bolts toward one of the zombies. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. and then it is going to attack when it gets there. And that is going to, I need to make an attack roll for that one. Sorry, let's see. There we go. So plus eight. Um, that is a 24 to hit. Woo, that'll nice. hit. Yes. Nice. And that is going to do um, 12 points of, um, let's see, that is going to be which kind of damage? Um, yeah, 12 points of force damage. Force damage. Good lord. Um, <laughs> so as this snowball flies towards, it just raises its head and goes flying back into the darkness. Um, you just hear a splat uh, off in the distance. You're fairly sure. And then you see the snowball continues to float there. Okay. And al al almost like it's, uh, you know, in a horror movie. Yeah, uh, you see these little like holes like emerge like where eyes would be and uh, this like carrot yeah. starts to grow out of its nose and then it turns and it looks at the other one. Amazing. <laughs> um, beneath that, a third of these, or but now a second of these things climbs up, gets a purchase on some of this ice. Um, the others still seem to be sort of swirling behind them, trying to find some sort of purchase here. Um, as up in the sky, <laughs> Robin, you watch and all of you see as this cloaking falls off of this woman as she floats up in the air above all of you um and she opens her mouth wider go ahead can i can i use my action now uh your held action yes absolutely now that you can see um I, I will now no and i yes. will I, there are two blasts of force that come at her fantastic um, so those are plus seven First is an 18. An 18 will, I believe, hit. It will. And the second was a 21. That'll hit. OK. Mm. Um, first one does eight damage. Second one does also eight damage. OK, 16 total there. Yep. OK. Um, as she begins to open her mouth wide and you can see her begin to <gasps> take in this long, deep breath that goes down to her diaphragm as one hit from, from uh, Maeve, the other hit oh, from Maeve, but she holds her position, continuing to suck in breath. Pivum, who's finally ready to go here, <laughs> takes one look at her, hears Maeve shout no, also goes, no, and immediately bursts into a bird as he begins to fly up towards her, about to meet her headlong. 
And with that, we will call <gasps> this episode. Oh, okay. yeah. oh we are at the bottom of the round. We will come back oh, at the top God. with Robin. Oh, no. um, thank you okay. so much for playing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. This wonderful fairy tale. You can endure all. You are strong, amazing, wonderful people. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, players, everyone at home. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone.